Hello, everybody. Um, so I wanted to address this letter that has been written to uh, the vice presidents of the European Commission. And these letters were written by ministers from Germany, Austria, Luxembourg, Denmark, and Spain. Now, I've transposed this letter to Word so I could highlight some sentences that made me, you know, frown a little bit. So, um, let's get going. Uh, we, the undersigned ministers of Germany, Austria, Denmark, Luxembourg and Spain, wish to thank the European Union for completing the first delegated act of the taxonomy regulation. It is based on impressive and important work. With that, I agree. Uh, it is impressive and important, but it was not good enough. And that's why we needed this delegated act to add nuclear to the mix. Uh, now, the trouble for me is that they also added gas. Um, I, I, I firmly believe we need to stop using fossil fuels. And, and we need to stop fossil fuels because of the air pollution that comes with fossil fuels, not just not not just CO2 emissions, but also emissions of harmful particulates and other elements. The current decade will be decisive for joint paths to climate neutrality and economic system that respects our planet's limits. In this regard, it is critical that we have a credible and goal-oriented taxonomy determining the degree of a business's activity, of business activities, environmental sustainability over its entire life cycle. Now, this is this is something I, I generally agree with, and that's why I usually uh, pick the materials perspective because I believe that the upstream materials perspective is, uh, aside from having a smokestack, if, if, if a technology has a smokestack, I, I categorically do not call it sustainable. But if it doesn't have a smokestack, uh, and with this smokestack, I don't mean a, a, a cooling tower, because a cooling tower doesn't emit smoke, it, emit, it emits water vapor. Um, then it's important to look at the upstream uh, activities. And in this case, uh, looking at upstream, I'm, I'm going to uh, get my, uh, my presentation here that I gave uh, a couple of days ago, uh, it, it is concerning this. So right here, you see the material requirements for wind, solar, and nuclear in tons per terawatt hour. So this is an efficiency metric, basically. And the smaller your bar is, the the more sustainable you are in my eyes. Now, it, it, th this emits stuff like uh, concrete, steel, aluminium, glass, and plastics. So that's not in here. And even if we would put that up in here, uh, it, it wouldn't make a, a lot of difference. And the same could be said if we would add uranium or thorium in this graph. Would, still would not make a difference. So if it if it if it's up to me and we have to uh, uh, look at you know the sustainability from a materials perspective, the nuclear is the best because it it requires the least amount of materials. Now there's another uh, consideration that we need to need to make here. For instance, if we look at you know Lake Bautau. Um, going there uh let's see it's all it's pretty nicely highlighted now, uh, now now this area here now this this is this is still nature reserve as you can see uh but but this is the area where our permanent magnets come from and permanent magnets are made uh from neodymium neodymium is uh you know, the metal that is being extracted in this area over here. And as you can see, uh, there is there is a large lake uh, filled with toxic sludge uh, containing mercury, arsenic, um, all kinds of heavy metals, including thorium, by the way. 
and it's probably contaminating the groundwater and it's generally not advised to you know to live anywhere near here but you know there's still a couple of hundred thousand people probably living there and then there is the matter of the slave labor uh for which china is known um with the uh sorry if i say it incorrectly the uyghurs um so so there's that and i i mean just just look at it if you look at china the colors are all funky um that's just because they 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 don't have very strict environmental rules so let's get back to the to the text uh, the taxonomy can hereby make a decisive contribution to the financing of the European Green Deal and the Green Transition. This has been stressed by a range of players from the financial sector, academia and civil society, and rightly so. The, reason com the recent commemorations to mark the anniversaries of the nuclear catastrophes in Fukushima and Chernobyl provided a strong reminder of the dangers of nuclear uh, technology. Well, the trouble is, if you didn't, if you didn't read the UN scare uh, reports about um, about you know what happened, uh, how many people were exposed, how many people contracted illnesses, and how many people died, um, then you might think that these these accidents were catastrophes. So, so I'm on record for, of saying that the Tohoku earthquake and the subsequent tsunami were the actual catastrophes here. Um, you know, with 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 nearly twenty thousand people disappearing, simply disappearing, never being found again. No one to bury, uh, no one to mourn, uh, no place to mourn. You know, to to go to your loved one and. So, so in, in essence, in Fukushima, the meltdowns were a secondary catastrophe. Now, the catastrophe here is more that we didn't understand, that we didn't, that that we that we were needlessly evacuating people that died from the fear of radiation, and the you know the what the 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 fact that we didn't let these people return to their houses afterwards the same can be said for chernobyl um should chernobyl have been evacuated i don't know uh maybe 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 especially because there was no iodine remediation which caused you know several thousand th thyroid cancers but on the other hand if we look at the technology we look at the rules and regulations. We look at the insights that we have gotten from these two accidents. Uh, I, I think that it is uh, unreasonable to 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 take these two incidents and say, okay, that's why we shouldn't do this stuff anymore. That would be the same as, you know, stopping to fly after the first airplane fell out of the sky or stopping to use cars or, I don't know, there's, there's plenty of, plenty of precedents that made us realize that we needed to change the way we were doing things and do stuff better. So let's continue. Um... For this reason, we are disconcerted to learn, in the opinion of the Joint Research Center, there was no indication that the high-risk technology, that is nuclear power, is more damaging to, to human health and to the environment than other forms of energy generation, such as solar and wind energy. Now, there's more in the taxonomy. Um, I'm not sure, but I believe that biomass is in there, and I believe that hydro is in there. Now, both bi biomass is 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 dangerous by definition. It has a smokestack. It it emits all kinds of hazardous stuff that you don't want to breathe in. So, there's no discussion to be had there. Hydro, same issue. Um, we've seen dam breaks that costs up to 100,000 people's lives in one go, 
in one go. And nuclear energy, civilian nuclear energy, has never had this impact. Never, ever, ever. If you look at radiation, radiation has never, ever had this kind of impact. If you look at the Bhopal uh, accident, for instance, there's, there's chemical processes that we do in this world, like fertilizer uh, production, uh, some kind of chemistry for God knows what, that is that is infinitely more dangerous than nuclear power. So let's continue. Um, we believe that this that this misconception is due to two grave methodology, methodological shortcomings in the JRC report. One, the JRC neglects to address the residual nuclear risk, assessing only normal operations of nuclear power plants. Thus, at the very starting point of this assessment, the JRC ignores potentially serious nuclear ac reactor accidents and their cost in terms of lives, health, and whole swaths of land becoming uninhabitable over long periods of time. This comes from the assumption that we didn't learn from Fukushima. And this also comes from the assumption that we didn't learn from Chernobyl. And that's simply untrue. Plus, from Chernobyl and Fukushima, we now have a combined of 40 years of experience looking for abnormalities in the populations, uh, looking uh, at, you know, what nature, how nature responds to the kind of uh, uh, radiological effects that, that, that stem from, from a, a nuclear meltdown. What what we see is something completely different as than the, than what we actually think that is happening. So in the case of the Chernobyl disaster, yes, there were effects on the population, radio radiological effects, mainly from iodine in the ingestion, people's thyroids uh, got inebriated or uh, inundated with. Uh, radioactive iodine and that caused mal malformalities which may eventually lead to cancer now that's not good obviously that's something we don't want but the good part about this is that it's not lethal it does not have to be lethal I believe that it's less than 10% of the people who actually got something wrong with their thyroids um, ended up getting getting cancer and needing serious treatment uh, to, to, to not die. But if you look at the, the environment, you know, the exclusion zone around Chernobyl has become a wildlife refugee. You can see that nature has basically reclaimed the entire region. But also, if you look at Fukushima, the fear of radiation has killed you know, a couple of thousand people, people who had to, to, to leave their homes while they were in a weakened state because they were either elderly or very sick. So, so it's sad that this is, this is the takeaway from, from Fukushima and Chernobyl that, 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 that we need to do this. We have on the other side, we have also a precedent of a meltdown that literally didn't cause any of the things that they say. And that's the Three Mile Island meltdown. It was a full meltdown, uh, you know, uh, but the containment, the containment building did its work. And if you look at the map, we, we can, we can do it right now. Uh, let's see, let's see three mile Island. That's near Harrisburg, uh, right on the dairy township, Pennsylvania. So, I mean, this is the Three Mile Island uh, nuclear power plant, as you can see. It's neatly situated on an island. There's people living here. There's people living here, you know. Um, and if you look at it, it's in a, it's in a pretty, uh, pretty well-populated area. There's Harrisburg, there's York, there's Lancaster, and if you zoom out a little bit more, then you see that it's not even that far from Philadelphia. That's maybe an hour's drive or something like that. I mean, I've been here in this region, and I 
uh, on the map, this maybe may, maybe this looks closer than it is, but it, this is at least uh, an hour, maybe an hour and a half driving from from Philadelphia to here. So it's in a, it, it's in a, it's a, and it's also it's slightly closer to Baltimore, by the way. So it's in a habitat it's in a habited area. People live there, and none of the things that you named happened there. The area is still inhabited. Not many people got sick from it. I mean, I don't believe that there's there's an epidemic of cancer or anything else of the sort. And nature didn't didn't got hurt either. So Three Mile Island is the precedent that we have to disprove this claim. You know, if it, if it has a good containment system, if it can be, if you can restore cooling at some point, there's nothing wrong with the nuclear power plant. According to the JRC, the residual risk of nuclear power can be disregarded because the assessment of other economic activities, such as generating electricity from wind energy, are also focused on normal operation. Now, I, I don't know if this is the case. I haven't read the JRC uh, 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 report that thoroughly, but I don't believe that's the case. Nuclear power, however, is a high-risk technology and wind energy is not. This is the essential difference that must be taken into account. Now, there's there's also other differences that need to be taken into account, such, into account, such as material usage, uh, what I showed you with Lake Bautau, um, you know, and, and the the overall feasibility of, of of whether we can actually do what we need to do using wind. So let's go to point number two. The JRC disregards the life cycle approach, lacking empirical data. Its assessment of deep geo. So if we look at this, the JRC, you know, uh, uh, lacking empirical data. Uh, what what we basically um, what we basically are asking the JRC to do is look at the entire life cycle, look at the upstream, look at, you know, what happens during uh, operation and what happens after operation. And if this is what needs to be done for nuclear, then it needs to be done for solar and for wind as well. And then we cannot disregard, you know, the fact that slave labor is used in China, the fact that they have very low sustainability uh, criteria, environmental criteria, environmental rules. The fact that these waste products and these byproducts and the upstream, you know, from, from, from getting the resources to creating the solar panels, all these waste streams all end up in nature in China, largely. There also have been explosions recently. So if we if we are going to absolutely create a 100% objective framework, then all energy sources are out. Every energy source is out. Its assessment of deep geological repositories is based on concepts that are all unproven. After more than 60 years of using nuclear power, not one single fuel element has been permanently disposed of anywhere in the world. And the question is whether we want to. Uh, and I think that this is an unreasonable demand because I these fuel elements, they, they constitute an economic opportunity. Uh, much more than they constitute a liability or a hazard because they are basically, uh, they don't want to go everywhere. They're well contained. Uh, they're being looked after. They're not being discarded in any way. So, so that this is not a, this is not a very good argument. And we have no operational experience with deep geological repository for high active waste. Now, uh, this is a strange, strange term to use. High active waste. I mean, uh, this is just weird. I mean, what does it mean? Does it mean that it that it that it sends out loads of radiation all the time? And what kind of radiation is that? And and what kind of isotopes are in that in there that create this type of radiation? So so this is a very ambiguous term that they are using here. And I, I, I'm 
I, I really hope that the European Commission, the commissioners say, okay, listen, this is not scientific enough. This is, this is too ambiguous. We're not going to do anything with this for decades to come. There will be no effective waste disposal solution for large amounts of dangerous waste generated. Now, the addition of the word dangerous is, it, 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 you know, they try to quantify this as being extremely dangerous, but if you look at the people handling this waste, they're perfectly fine. I mean, you can go to Covra, for instance, in the Netherlands, which is a, a centralized uh, waste repository, and you can get into the room where they have stored high-level waste, you know, and I'm talking about high-level waste. So this is uh, this is this is stuff that contains actinides, and you know that that's the kind. This is the super uber dangerous stuff that these people talk about. Um, plus, you know, we we have to give credit where credit is due. Um, the Finnish have almost finished on Kahlo. They are on the cusp of starting to use it. So they say that it's not 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 going to be there for decades to come. And this is simply untrue. And this violates the principle of no undue burdens on future generations, described by the JRC. Now, this is this is simply. Um, I would I would say this is almost like a, a, a philosophical debate. What constitutes undue burden? Um, I, I see it as an opportunity for future generations to create energy from something that we have already unearthed. So I, I would say we're leaving, you know, our children and the future generations with something good. And they say, well, no, it's dangerous. So we are leaving our future generations with something that is bad. Now let's let's finish this letter. Furthermore, we believe the choice of how to proceed going forward is inadequate. Currently, the JRC report is undergoing review by two scientific boards whose area of expertise are limited to health and radiation protection. There are no plans for the specific environmental aspects to be assessed scientifically by a committee with expertise on in environmental science, nuclear safety and the safety and safe nuclear waste disposal. This means the scientific review omits key elements of the do no significant harm principle. Now, I mean, I believe that the share committee has said that they do think that there's a risk of mixing uh, warm water into an area where there are coral reefs. So there is some environmental impact assessment being done there, but it's not very thorough. But in essence, I don't believe that nuclear power plants have a really big impact on their surroundings. Even if uh, you would have the worst radi radiological possible, um, uh, radiologically possible uh, accident, in one of these nuclear power plants, like Bosle and Inland, or some of these German nuclear power plants, I, I don't even. I, I think it's highly, highly, highly unlikely uh, that you would get uh, any significant release of nuclear uh, of, of radioactivity into the surroundings. Um, and I take uh, Three Mile Island as a precedent, a pressurized water reactor with a good containment. We recognize the sovereign right of member states to decide for or against nuclear power as part of their national energy systems. However, we are concerned that including nuclear power in the taxonomy would permanently damage its integrity and credibility. Now, I believe that its integrity and credibility are already damaged. Um, as long as there is no mention of slave labor in China, as long as there is no mention of, uh, you know, the, um, the circumstances under which we get cobalt from, from Central Africa, um, the Congo, 
as long as there is no mention of the environmental impacts of lithium mining, of copper mining, of neodymium mining, uh, all the other stuff that needs to get, uh, get extracted to build renewables, I think that it, that it lacks uh, credibility and it lacks, especially lacks integrity. Uh, because those are also uh, things that I would consider doing harm. Um, yeah, and therefore its usefulness. Many savers and investors would lose faith in financial products marketed as sustainable. Let's see if I can get the final uh, piece of there so you can read with me. Um, they would be financing. Uh, uh, let's see. Suitable if they had to fear that by buying these products, they would be financing activities in nuclear power. Well, I mean, it's time that, it, that nuclear power gets normalized. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too worried if it would get included and people would therefore be investing in nuclear activities. And if they don't want to, then they don't simply don't simply ask the, the, you know, the, the portfolio uh, manager of your bank or your investment uh, banker, uh, what's in the portfolio. And if it says nuclear and you don't want to participate in nuclear, then don't. It's that simple. Only recently, several renowned institutional investors voiced their opposition to including nuclear power. Um, how many institutional investors? Were it all invest institutional investors? Were it five out of 100? Or, I mean, this is meaningless. These market voices should be heard. Nuclear power is incompatible with the taxonomies with the taxonomy regulations do no significant harm principle. And I, 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 I thoroughly disagree with this. Um, I think that nuclear does among, does amongst the least harm of all uh, energy sources. We therefore urge the European Union not to jeopardize the courageous path it has taken towards making the EU the global lead market for sustainable finance. Now, here's the thing that I wanted to show you. And, and I really wish that these countries would wake up and would see what they are doing. So the signees of this letter are ministers from Luxembourg, Germany, Austria, Denmark, and Spain. Now, Luxembourg is obviously one of the worst parties in here. What you see here is tons of CO2 equivalent, uh, tons of CO2 emissions per capita over the entire economy of a country. So for some reason, Luxembourg is an outlier, whether that has to do with energy production or uh, export of energy, or I don't care what it is, but they are the worst. So they should be the first to recognize that they don't have a say in this, that they don't have the authority, moral, moral authority to tell other countries that they can, that, that they can uh, have access to good finance options for nuclear power plants. Then we get Germany. The story of Germany is well known. I don't need to reiterate it. Now we have Austria, uh, a, a, a very strong nuclear, uh, anti-nuclear country. Then we have Denmark. Denmark has the luck that they have a huge shoreline with masses of uh, offshore wind. So so they <clears throat> they get into they get below the ten tons per capita. And then you have Spain. Spain is a relatively small economy. Uh, you know, compared to its relative size and its population. So, well, there's that. But then we contrast it with France and Sweden. Uh, both countries heavily invested in nuclear. 
having a large amount of nuclear power and obviously this leads to and there is a correlation here it's not it, it, there is a strong correlation between having lots of nuclear being more than 50 percent of your electricity and having low co2 emissions per capita so in essence these countries who are failing in their quest to eliminate co2 emissions are telling countries who are succeeding in eliminating co2 emissions that they can't have more nuclear power or at least that they can't finance nuclear power with cheap loans from institutional investors and that's something that has to stop it, it, it it's absolutely crazy that this is happening the uk uh, recently adopted its own green taxonomy and it excluded nuclear as well and i mean um, i just can't wrap my head around this what is happening why are they doing this so that's uh, my rant for today thank you all for watching and have a nice day bye bye